Welcome to the 5% Truth. Today, we're diving into the story of the Ford Heights Four, a powerful and tragic case of wrongful conviction. This case highlights how easily the justice system can be corrupted by coerced confessions, unreliable evidence, and prosecutorial misconduct. Unfortunately, it echoes many others in the history of wrongful convictions. Before we get into the specifics of today's case, let's talk about wrongful convictions in general. Across the U.S., thousands of innocent people have been wrongfully imprisoned. According to the National Registry of Exonerations, more than 3,300 people have been exonerated since 1989. They have lost over 29,000 years behind bars for crimes they didn't commit. Many of these cases involve racial bias, police misconduct, and the use of unreliable forensic techniques. In the early hours of May 11, 1978, 28-year-old Lawrence Lionberg and his fiance, 23-year-old Carol Schmall, were abducted from a gas station in Homewood, Illinois, where Lawrence was working his first overnight shift. Their bodies were found the next day in an abandoned townhouse in East Chicago Heights, a community later renamed Ford Heights. Lionberg had been shot multiple times, and Schmall had been sexually assaulted and shot in the back of the head. The murders sent shockwaves through the community, and the pressure to solve the case quickly was immense. Just days later, on May 14, 1978, four young black men, Dennis Williams, Kenneth Adams, Willie Ring, and Verniel Jimerson, were arrested for the crime. Their arrests were based on the testimony of a witness, Charles McCraney, and Paula Gray, a 17-year-old girl with intellectual disabilities who would soon play a pivotal role in the case. Gray was interrogated by police for two days before signing a confession, implicating herself and the four men. She testified that she had been forced to hold a cigarette lighter while the men raped Carol Schmall. Later, however, Gray recanted her testimony, stating that the police had coerced her into making the statement, but the damage had been done. In September 1978, Dennis Williams, Kenneth Adams, and Willie Range were tried together, while Paula Gray stood trial separately. Gray's recanted testimony was still used, and all three men were convicted. Dennis Williams received the death penalty, Adams was sentenced to 75 years in prison, and Range to life without parole. Verniel Jimerson, who had been charged separately, was eventually arrested and convicted in 1985 based solely on Gray's testimony. The trials were filled with inconsistencies and dubious evidence. Eyewitness testimony from McCraney was unreliable, and forensic evidence presented by the prosecution was weak. State serologist Michael Pudlecki testified that seminal fluid found at the crime scene matched the blood type of Williams and Adams, but the science behind this claim was questionable. Worse, the defense later uncovered that key police reports and witness statements pointing to other suspects were never disclosed, a clear violation of the defendant's rights. Years passed, and despite numerous appeals, the convictions of the Ford Heights Four remained. But in the 1990s, a team of journalism students from Northwestern University, led by Professor David Protess, began to investigate. Their findings were shocking. They uncovered police reports that had been withheld, naming other suspects, men who had never been arrested. More importantly, they pushed for DNA testing, a relatively new technology at the time. In 1996, DNA testing definitively proved that none of the Ford Heights Four were the source of the semen found on Carol Schmall. This breakthrough was the key to their exoneration, but the real perpetrators had yet to be brought to justice. As the truth unraveled, a man named Arthur Red Robinson, along with two others, confessed to the murders. Robinson's confession and DNA evidence pointed to his guilt, finally clearing the names of the four men who had spent nearly two decades behind bars for a crime they didn't commit. On June 14, 1996, Dennis Williams, Kenneth Adams, Willie Range, and Verniel Jimerson were freed. They were exonerated of all charges, marking the end of an 18-year nightmare. The exoneration led to a civil rights lawsuit against Cook County, resulting in a $36 million settlement, the largest in U.S. history at the time. The men, 
who had become known as the Ford Heights Four, were granted gubernatorial pardons and received state compensation for their wrongful imprisonment. The Ford Heights Four's story is one of tragedy, not only for the lives lost in the original crime, but also for the nearly 20 years stolen from four innocent men. This case underscores the dangers of coerced confessions, unreliable eyewitness testimony, and prosecutorial misconduct. It's a powerful reminder that justice delayed is justice denied. Before we close, let's also remember the personal toll this case took on these four men. Dennis Williams, Kenneth Adams, Willie Range, and Verniel Jimerson were fathers, sons, and brothers. Their lives were ripped apart, and their families suffered alongside them. While they were eventually freed, their wrongful imprisonment left scars that could never fully heal. Dennis Williams passed away in 2003 at the age of 46, just seven years after being released. His legacy, along with that of his co-defendants, reminds us of the importance of continuing the fight for justice for all. Thank you for listening to The 5% Truth. If you found this story compelling, please subscribe and stay tuned for more episodes where we uncover stories of injustice and explore how we can create a fairer system. I'm Tracy, and until next time, remember, justice delayed is justice denied.